Recoil and Propulsion. So the, we've been discussing the uh, principle of action-reaction, and one application of that principle is to explain uh, recoil. So uh, in recoil, we have a force which is uh, propelling something, say, uh, like a bullet. So a gun fires a bullet. There is a force that pushes the bullet away from the gun. If that's the action, then there has to be a reaction which uh, pushes the gun away from the bullet. Now, uh, those forces are equal and opposite. Uh, it's an action-reaction pair. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the accelerations are the same. Uh, the accelerations depend on the weight of uh, the bullet and the gun. And uh, the resulting speed that we get in the recoil depends on the ratio of the weight of the bullet to the weight of the gun uh, times the speed of the bullet. So uh, we get a large uh, recoil speed either when the um, ratio of the bullet weight to the gun weight is large. In other words, if it's a, if it's a large uh, bullet, uh, we tend to have a high recoil speed, uh, high recoil force. Uh, and then also if the uh, speed of the bullet is uh, a high speed, then we have uh, a lot of recoil. So let's see that in this ex um, video shows uh, people shooting an elephant gun. So the, um, uh, the elephant gun has a very large uh, bullet and you see it, um, that recoil force is quite large. This uh, hit this guy's uh, shoulder. And uh, so unlike a, an ordinary rifle, which would have a smaller bullet and would still have a recoil, the, uh, the elephant gun firing a very large bullet uh, has that much more uh, recoil. Uh, now, the uh, principle of um, recoil is sometimes used for comic effect, so we'll see that in these uh, Roadrunner cartoons. So, of course, there the um, the joke is that the instead of the lighter bullet or cannonball going at a high speed and the massive cannon not moving, it was the other way around. Same thing, same thing there. So just playing with uh, the uh, recoil in order to uh, make the gag. Now, recoil is also the basis for a rocket propulsion. So in order to, say, move in space, uh, you uh, discharge uh, something in one direction and then make use of the recoil to move you in the other direction. You see that in the uh, Wally uh, when he's moving around in space uh, propelled by a fire extinguisher. And that um, uh, using a fire extinguisher for propulsion is a classic uh, physics demonstration. Here we see it done by the uh, technical services at, uh, at MIT, where they have a tricycle with a fire extinguisher in the back. So, now, uh, there's an important uh, concept to understand uh, to uh, appreciate how propulsion works in terms of when do we have forces that can accelerate uh, s a character and when are the forces in balance so that they don't uh, cause acceleration. So, so let's come back and think about uh, balanced forces for a moment. Now, a pair of forces balance each other 
when they're equal in magnitude, opposite in direction, and they're acting on the same object. So here's an example. We have a sack. It's just hanging here from the rope. And uh, we have two forces on the sack. We have the force of gravity pulling the sack down, but we also have the tension in the rope. So the rope is exerting a, an upward force uh, on the sack. And uh, there's no acceleration of the sack. It's just uh, sitting there. So we know that those two forces are in balance. Uh, now, notice that those two forces are both on the sack, and that's essential for having uh, balanced forces. Now, you might think that this is an action-reaction pair, but that's not the case. Um, two forces that are part of an action-reaction pair never balance each other, because in an action-reaction pair, the forces are always acting on different objects or characters. So going back to that example of the sack, the tension in the rope, the if that's an action force, the reaction is that the sack pulls down on the rope. So the rope pulls up on the sack, the sack pulls down on the rope. Uh, the earth pulls down on the sack, the sack pulls up on the earth. So you see, um, these two forces that were in balance, the tension and the gravity, are part of separate action-reaction pairs. Now, let's go back to uh, propulsion and see uh, how do we actually uh, move something. So let, let's look at this uh, situation where uh, Miss A is pushing uh, this cart with her little brother inside. Uh, so uh, she's pushing on the cart. Let's call that the action. The cart pushes back on her. Um, now, those two forces are equal and opposite, but they don't balance because, as we said, the two forces are acting on different objects. Uh, the first one is uh, acting on the cart, and the second one, the reaction, is acting on her. Just like that. Now, um, the force of the reaction that's on her is um, pushing her towards the left. So how is it possible for her to move uh, towards the right? Well, uh, it has to be that there's uh, other forces um, that are acting on her. So if that can't be the only force. In fact, um, the key is that there's a force of friction on the ground. If there was no friction on the ground, then she wouldn't be able to move forward. So uh, here's what's going on. We have uh, on the ground, she is pushing back. There's a reaction, the uh, ground pushes her towards the right. Now, as long as that force is larger than the reaction force of the cart pushing her backwards, then she will be able to move forward. In other words, she needs to exert enough force on the ground in order to move forward. Now, let's look at a, another case here, which is uh, her little brother is pushing on the side of the cart. Now, uh, is he able to push and propel himself uh, just by pushing on the cart? Well, it seems kind of obvious that he can't. This is That would be internal propulsion. But what's, um, what's the problem there? Uh, he can't push the cart by himself because even though he can push with his hands on the side, the total force that he's exerting on the cart is still going to be zero. Uh, to understand that, what other force is he exerting besides pushing with his hands? Well, because he's staying in the cart, uh, his uh, butt is sitting on the floor of the cart and there's a force exerted there, unlike uh, his sister who has her feet outside the cart. Uh, so there's a pair of action forces and a pair of reaction forces. These are all in balance. So he's pushing um, forward, but uh, his butt is pushing backwards. Uh, there's reaction forces to, the, um, to those actions and the two reaction forces balance each other 
and the two action forces balance each other, and because of that, um, his pushing doesn't uh, affect the uh, the cart or move the cart. Okay, let's um, look at a simple example that that illustrates uh, why internal propulsion won't work. So let's uh, see that in uh, this Roadrunner cartoon where Wiley has um, an idea of how to use an outboard motor in the desert. So he has this outboard motor in the wash tub. Okay. Now, of course, this is hilarious because it's, it's obviously something that would not uh, work. Um, and uh, well, you know how this is going to end. And yeah, bad choice. Okay, <clears throat> now, um, this internal propulsion doesn't work because uh, if we have the propeller pushing the water, well, that would result in a reaction that would uh, move the outboard motor and propeller um, uh, towards uh, screen left. Uh, <clears throat> the problem is that because the water stays inside the tub, uh, there's a force due to the water pushing on the back of the tub. Uh, the water stays in the tub, and so these two um, uh, forces on the water have to be in balance, and that means that the two forces um, on the tub and the propeller have to be in balance, and so the um, this uh, will not work in terms of propulsion. Uh, let's look at a slightly more complicated example. So this one seems um, more plausible, but if you think about it, this is uh, exactly the same in terms of the physics as the outboard motor inside the tub. So uh, here the uh, propeller is pushing on the air, uh, but then the sail uh, has is capturing the uh, uh, air, and so the um, uh, these two forces on the air are in balance uh, since the sail is stopping the forward motion of the of the air and then um, since those two are in balance the force on the sail and the force on the propeller are in uh, balance and so this internal propulsion won't work uh, interestingly if you simply got rid of the sail and pointed the propeller back the other way, that would work just fine. In case uh, you have doubts about that, let's just do the experiment. So take a little um, car that has a propeller on it, and then we will first uh, just do it with the propeller, and that works just fine. That's uh, similar to an airboat uh, used in the Everglades. Now we put a fan and turn it on and it doesn't move. So in, uh, in summary, principle of action-reaction uh, explains recoil and recoil is the basis for uh, rocket propulsion. The two forces of an action-reaction pair never balance each other because they always act on different objects or characters. So when you have a pair of forces that are in balance, you automatically know that that can't be part of an action-reaction pair. Uh, each of those forces has another force that's a part of um, its action-reaction pair, but the two forces that balance each other um, are not part of the same action-reaction pair. And uh, we made use of that in explaining um, internal propulsion. Internal propul propulsion uh, doesn't work because there's a, a 
two action reaction pairs and each force in the first pair is balanced by another force in the other action reaction pair. Now I have to say this is a difficult topic and some of these examples might have been a bit confusing. Don't, uh, don't be discouraged. This is uh, a little complicated stuff, but uh, don't be, um, don't dismiss it either because it's very important to understand each of the forces that's acting on a character to do successful character animation. If you uh, don't represent each force successfully, then you won't be able to achieve believable character animation. So good luck with that.